Hey, it's Professor Gould, and in this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion about genetics. We're going to talk specifically about how genes are controlled. This is called gene expression. Gene expression is just how a cell figures out whether a gene should be turned on or off, whether that gene should be literally expressed as a physical trait. And at first thought, this sounds kind of odd, like, of course, you only need certain genes in certain places, but remember that the genes say, or the, the cells in say the liver of a sea slug, they have all of the genes necessary to make all the parts of the sea slug, all the mucus making uh, cells, all the skin cells, all of that, the liver doesn't need all of that. So how do cells control whether genes are turned on or off. And again, this is important because, um, of course, some cells, like this is a pancreatic cell, it's going to have the gene for glycolysis turned on. All cells are going to have the gene for glycolysis turned on because you remember glycolysis is the first step in cellular respiration. So all cells that do cellular respiration are going to have the glycolysis enzyme turned on. Um, but uh, genes for making antibodies, those only need to be turned on in the white blood cells that make antibodies. The gene for making insulin only needs to get turned on, in, turned on in the parts of the pancreas that make the insulin. So this is important because different cells in different parts of an organism do different things. But to understand this, let's talk first not about a multicellular organism, but let's talk first about a bacterium. So bacteria are, of course, much simpler than eukaryotic uh, organisms. They're single cell. And remember that they just have one chromosome that's a, a, a loop of DNA, um, many fewer genes. And so the process of gene expression is going to be much simpler. So imagine that this is a strand of DNA inside a bacterium that can eat milk. Okay, can break down lactose, which is, remember, the sugar found in milk. Well, there's several genes uh, involved in creating lac the enzymes needed to break down lactose. So the control for all of these genes is in one place, and it's called an operator. And then there's a spot called a promoter just upstream from that. And then downstream are the genes, all of the related genes, they're all together. And this whole thing is called an operon. The operon is all of the genes and all of the DNA sequences necessary to express the genes for doing a certain thing. So this is called the LAC operon because it's involved in lactose. So RNA polymerase, you remember RNA polymerase is our molecule, our enzyme, uh, that uh, transcribes DNA. So bacteria have RNA polymerase too. It's going to bind to the promoter. So the RNA polymerase reads along with DNA until it gets to a promoter. And um, then it's going to travel along. Uh, there's an operator between the promoter and the gene. And this operator is going to control whether these genes actually get expressed or not. So if there is a protein bound to the operator, then the RNA polymerase can't bind and can't read the operator. And if it can't read the operator, it can't read the genes either. It's got to go from the promoter downstream. So if, the, if this bacterial cell is in an environment where there's no milk and there's no lactose to break down. Then this repressor protein is going to bind to the operator and it's going to prevent RNA polymerase from even attaching to the promoter. So RNA polymerase can't transcribe. The genes and the enzymes for breaking down lactose can't be made in the cell. Now, that's what happens if lactose is absent. When lactose is present, lactose actually binds to the repressor protein. The repressor protein has a higher affinity for lactose than it does for the DNA. So it binds to the lactose. What happens when we bind something to a protein? The protein changes shape. 
And so when the repressor binds to lactose, it lets go of the promoter or the operator um, and goes back into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now RNA polymerase can bind to our strand of DNA and transcribe all of the genes involved. That's going to create a strand of mRNA that is going to be uh, read by ribosomes to create the proteins that are enzymes to break down lactose. And then when the, um, when the milk runs out, when the lactose runs out, the enzymes have a very, very high affinity for lactose, a higher affinity than the repressor. So the enzyme is going to take the lactose from the repressor. The repressor, no longer bound to the lactose, it's going to change shape again, and now it's the right shape to bind to the DNA, and that's going to prevent the RNA polymerase from transcribing the gene anymore. So without milk present, without lactose present, the genes never get transcribed because the repressor is bound to the operator and RNA polymerase can't do its job. When milk is present, the lactose binds to the repressor. The repressor lets go of the operator. RNA polymerase binds to the DNA, transcribes the genes, and the RNA is then used to make the enzymes. Once the enzymes have gotten rid of all of the lactose that was present, the repressor goes back to its job of binding to the DNA. Okay, so that's gene expression in bacteria. Simple, short, easy. In the next section, we're gonna start talking about how eukaryotic cells do gene expression way more complicated. Hang on, we can handle it, but it's much more complicated than when just one repressor and one opera.